The first month in the big leagues has been a learning process for 20-year-old rookie sensation Kerry Wood. He's experienced some failure and some success, too. He's discovered what pitch will get him the big out when he needs it and what pitch will get hit out as the Dodgers' Mike Piazza taught him. Today, the learning curve continues against the NL Central's head of the class, the Houston Astros. And Kerry Wood, the student, looks to keep the bees off the report card next. time for Cubs baseball a beautiful afternoon here at Wrigley Field it's the second and final game of this brief two game series between the first place Houston Astros and the Chicago Cubs. Hello again everybody I'm Chip Carey along with Steve Stone welcome to WGN sports coverage of Chicago Cubs baseball and a big day today the gunslinger Kerry Wood takes them out in Stoney he has been outstanding especially here at Wrigley. He's done very well in this ballpark and it couldn't come at a better time as far as the Cubs are concerned. You see his numbers at Wrigley Field as opposed to his numbers on the road and against the Cardinals he was brilliant last time out. But the big test for him will he be able to keep those Houston Astros from stealing bases takes those hard throwers a little time to uncork the pitch and as you know this Astro team the best in the National League at stolen bases. They've stolen 44 this year with that in mind Sandy Martinez in the lineup today. Last night they ran at will today may be a different story Kerry Wood will have to speed up his delivery but Sandy throws the ball real well but this Astro team not just a stolen base threat are they they're a very balanced ball club maybe the best we've seen so far in the central well if you take a look around they can hit they can hit for power they can run and they have some guys who understand situational hitting as you look at that graphic and you realize that the Houston Astros probably are the toughest task for any starting pitcher. Well the Cubs picked up five runs last night against this Astro ball club today though they take on Shane Reynolds who really hasn't enjoyed the friendly confines very much has it. Well Shane Reynolds has been awfully tough against the Cubs in Houston but in this ballpark an ERA over eight he's really struggled hopefully more struggles ahead for Mr. Reynolds today. That would be nice perhaps some ground to be gained as well. It's game two of the Cubs and the Astros before we start the ball game. Let's send it downstairs for our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN. Brought to you by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. The new Dodge. From cars to minivans to trucks, it's about change. The new Dodge. The Discover Card. The card that pays you back with a cash back bonus award. AutoZone. The best parts in auto parts. Pepsi, Generation Next. ComEd, providing customers with reliable electric service for over 100 years. And by Southwest Airlines, offering low fares and frequent flights. Southwest Airlines, the official airline of the Chicago Cubs. A 
Another beautiful day for baseball here at the friendly confines 64 degrees a light breeze out of the southeast at seven miles per hour as today the Cubs and Astros wrap up this brief two game series Houston leading the Central Division with a record of 20 and 11 here is Larry Durker's starting lineup with the killer bees atop the order Biggio Bell and Bagwell the top three Bell leads the National League with a 403 batting average. The heart of the order has Jack Howell at third Moise Salu in center former Cub Dave Clark is in left hitting sixth Gutierrez the shortstop Osmus the catcher Shane Reynolds the pitcher will bat ninth for the front running Astros and the Pepsi defense for Jim Riggleman and the Cubs it's Rodriguez Brown and Sosa left to right in the infield Kevin Ory Blauser Morandini and Grace and a battery of Sandy Martinez and young Kerry Wood going to the mound in search of his third victory. You look at the ERA way up there at 589 but when he's been good he's been very good as a 25 strikeouts in 18 in the third innings what a test. And obviously the key is stopping the killer bees atop the order and especially their leadoff man Craig Biggio who is just a marvelous ball player and earlier today we talked to Tom McCraw of the Astros about what Craig Biggio means to this Astro attack. Number one is he's a gamer I mean he comes to play every day. Uh, he knows the things to do to get on base. If we need a base runner, and he's trying to, you know, get that walk, or he'll team take a get hit with a pitch ball to get on base. We need that ball to go to the right side. He'll go to the right side with it, and he has the capability which most leadoff hitters don't have, is he can lead the ballpark for you in a tight ball game, and, and he loves to be in that tight situation. That guy is tough. They may have two of the toughest guys in baseball on this Astro team: Biggio one, Bagwell the other, Jerry Meals, the home plate umpire. He may be a key man in this ball game for Kerry Wood. You talked about that a bit last night. Well, I think it really depends on just exactly what strike zone Kerry Wood is going to get. If he gets the same strike zone Wally Bell was calling last night, he's going to be pretty tough to beat. He went one for five last night with a late home run and the first pitch sails inside one ball no strikes That knocked the mask right off the head of Jerry Meals as he's probably encouraging Sandy Martinez to get a glove on it. Watch it again. Sandy wow. just misses it. <laughs> that is some heat folks and Biggio uh, rather carefully steps back in. And it's 2 0. Oh. Well, Biggio is going to try to take a walk. He's going to get on base any way he can. And you notice those are just fake bunts. He's going to force Kerry Wood to throw strikes. And that, of course, what you wait to see from this very talented young man. He's got the 98 mile an hour heat. But can he get it over? Two balls and a strike to Biggio, who's hitting a hefty 315 with three home runs and 13 batted in. And he leads the National League in stolen bases with 14 and 16 tries. Two and two. Well, the wind not much of a factor today. It's out of the southeast at seven miles an hour. 64 degrees at game time. And if the rain does hold off it'll be very pleasant at the friendly confines today. Two balls two strikes. Got him with the heat. That ball was really sizzling one down. Biggio swung when that ball was in the glove. You watch it here. And Biggio swinging way late. And that's one of the worst swings you'll see him take. And at least he can't tell anybody on the bench how that curveball is because he didn't see one. <laughs> yeah, right. And here's Derek Bell, the leading hitter in the National League with a 403 average, six home runs, 28 batted in. Bell had a tough time early in the game last night against Mark Clark, but then had. An RBI single in the seventh inning for the Astros and reached on the double error by Morandini in the eighth. No balls and a strike to Mr. Bell who already has 50 hits on the year but is down two strikes. Well so far so good and so far these Astros have to be pretty impressed with what they've seen. That was the first breaking ball and it was a dandy. Nothing in two. Right back to the screen. One thing I know Jim Riggleman would love to see 
from Kerry Wood today is another seven inning performance like he gave the ball club last time out against the Cardinals. This Cub bullpen has worked a lot lately. And you know the question about Kerry is going to be the high pitch count as the day continues and he changes speeds and Bell strikes out. Oh my goodness. Two up two down. Well he's got two different kinds of curveballs and that was one that came in a little slower than the last one. And watch Bell swing over the top of this. From the Southwest Plainview camera take a look at a good hitter. Looking real bad. Big slow curveball gets Bell two up two down and here's Bagwell. This is a man that can turn around the best fastball. So a fun challenge here for him and a strike and the kid is really pumping him over with ease right now. Against the Cardinals carry through 104 pitches. And that got him through seven. We'd love another one of those kinds of outings again today. One and one to Bagwell. He laid off. It's two and one. Well, now odds are Bagwell's going to see a fastball, and he's been pulling off the ball. So if you're Kerry Wood, you'd like to keep it on the outer third. Keep it out away from Bags. Ooh. Just some tremendous heat with a little hop at the end. And he just threw it right by him. Two balls, two strikes. The Astros just shaking their heads right now. The gunslinger ready, the 2 2. Strike three call. He punched out the order in the first. Nothing doing for the Astros. Here come the Cubs in the bottom half of the first. Kerry Wood struck out the Astros in order in the first. Here come the Cubs and the Pepsi lineup. The Cubs a game over 500, a fourth in the National League Central with Brant Brown, Mickey Morandini, and Sammy Sosa, the top three. Sosa with a 12-game hit streak. Mark Grace, the Cubs cleanup man, has a nine-game hitting streak and has fared well against Reynolds. Then it's Henry Rodriguez, Jeff Blauser, Sandy Martinez, the catcher, Kevin Ory back in the lineup, and Kerry Wood, the pitcher, will bat ninth. And the defense for Larry Durker and the Houston Astros. Clark, Alou, and Bell left to right in the infield. The venerable Jack Howell, Gutierrez, BGO, and Bagwell. Brad Osmus behind the plate. And Shane Reynolds on the hill. As you see, a 2-2 two two record on for his eighth start. The ERA up there. This year, uncharacteristically, giving up 11 and a half hits per nine innings. And he's always had trouble in this ballpark. And the Cubs are hoping that continues because the way Kerry Wood is throwing, they don't need too many runs today. So Reynolds against Brown to open up the Cubs half of the first inning. Brandt last night went one for four at eight. Three run homer. That the wind didn't help at all. He's got such tremendous power. Yes. That Those burly wrists. Had no problems hitting that ball out of the park. And Reynolds evens the count at a ball and a strike. Reynolds. Reynolds is He's worked sharpening up his curveball and his slider, and we should see a few more of those. Last year it was basically fastball and forkball. Fisted out of play, one and two. Reynolds last year just nine and ten. The ERA up there at 423. Only completed two of his 30 starts. He was hurt, had some. Arthroscopic surgery to repair the meniscus in his right knee had a cyst removed as well. But he's back to start the year. He started the last three opening days for the Astro team. So he's their top gun, and he tries to lead the Astros to a sweep today here at Wrigley Field. Two balls, two strikes to the Cubs leadoff man, Brett Brown. Got him with an off speed pitch. So strikeouts the story so far. Four batters have struck out in the first inning and a third. Well, when you consider that this Houston team has lost 60% of their starting rotation from last year, as you look at that split finger for strike three, you have to realize Larry Durker has his hands full. He lost his number one starter in Daryl Kyle. You got Ramon Garcia hurt. You got Chris Holt hurt. Right. So that's 60%. Mickey Morandini fouls it back, but then you add in Mike Campton. He's won five games. Lima's won five games. Somewhat surprisingly, they 
lead the National League in wins with those two men and you know Reynolds is going to rebound or at least you hope he will. Well you figure Hampton was there because he had a good year last year. I think the surprise is Lima who moved from a one and six bullpen man to a five and one starter. Morandini evens the count a ball and a strike 0 for 4 last night and a beautiful look at the friendly confines from our high center field scoreboard. Good sized crowd gathering here at the ballpark. One and two. Reynolds a good sized right hander at 6 3 210 pounds. He tried to check his swing and could not, says Jerry Meals. Morandini can't believe that call. Nor can the Cubs bench. I thought he checked his swing from up here, but he is struck out. Jim Ringelman coming out, and he says, You can't be calling that. But Jerry Meals is saying, I can and I will. And I did. I think all Jim wants is for him to ask for a little help on that play. Because I don't think he went around. Well, we've had five hitters and five strikeouts, and watch Morandini as he takes one up and in. He never swung. In fact, he just pivoted, and from the Southwest Airlines plain view camera, we'll take a look at just a pivot with the front foot, and he kept his hands back and still got rung up. So a tough break for him, and now Sosa takes a strike. Sammy, a 12 game hit streak. He's hit four home runs. He's knocked in nine during this career high spurt for him. And he's climbed into the top 10 in the National League hit parade. He's hitting 352. But he's behind two quick strikes. Well, that split finger has always been an outstanding pitch, and we interchangeably use split finger and fork ball. It's pretty much the same pitch. And Shane Reynolds has always had that. He's always had better luck in the dome because I don't think you pick it up as well as you do outside. And this park has always been a mystery to him. A picture perfect day for baseball at Wrigley. Now time called as Sammy steps back out. Well, this will be a test for Sammy and a test of his patience because for one of the few times he's down 0 2. Let's see if he has a patience when a veteran pitcher nips at one of the corners. The 0 2. He spit that one low. One ball, two strikes. During this 12 game hit streak Sosa has struck out only seven times. He's walked seven times as well. So he's been much much more patient and consequentially much more effective. But that time he went fishing and six hitters up six hitter hitters down on strikes after one inning at Wrigley Field we are scoreless. Six strikeouts by these two teams after one inning of play and on to the second we go for the Astros Howell Alou and Clark will take a look at young right hander Kerry Wood Jack Howell's a man who had a pretty good career here in the States went to Japan for four years with both the Ukult Swallows and the Giants Yomi Tokyo Yuri, Giants and did what a nice job and then now is back and resurrected his career again. Now that's got to be a swing now he appeals and it's not. That's not right. One ball no strikes to Howell. Howell at one point came very close to winning the triple crown. He was the MVP. In Japan. Had a good cut. Well in his four years overseas hit 100 home runs. Knocked in 272. And he said he really enjoyed his time over there. And does not regret for one instant his four years involved in Japanese baseball. Got a chance to face Hideki Arabu in spring training. And he told me that when he read all the reports that the Yankees had signed the Japanese Nolan Ryan, he said he was wondering who they signed because it wasn't the guy that he faced in spring training. He said he was a decent pitcher, but. Not Nolan Ryan esque. Well, he's seeing a guy right now with Nolan Ryan type heat. One and two from Kerry Wood. Got him swinging. He struck out the first four he's faced. I'm not sure what the record is. I think I recall Tom Seaver striking out eight straight men. I think Roger Clemens did that also, and there's some high heat. And sayonara to Mr. Howell. 
And Ohio Gazayamas to Moise Salu, which I think means good morning <laughs> or good day. Haven't brushed up on my Japanese of late, though. Here's Alu. Breaking ball outside corner, strike one. Moise is hitting 305, seven home runs, 28 runs batted in. Oh, and two. Well, that's what that real sharp breaking curve will do to a right hand hitter because he can't tell it's a curveball. He's thinking fastball, starts his swing, and then the ball disappears, and you look rather foolish. Smart pitch there, testing that outside edge from Jerry Meals, but he missed with it. A ball, two strikes. Got him. That was a great pitch because Sandy Martinez called the fastball, and you saw him take the glove and motion. I want it upstairs. Nobody's going to hit his fastball upstairs. If you swing at it, you're going down. And you see the high heat rising, and yet another strikeout, five in a row. But now a different challenge. A left-hand hitter faces him, Dave Clark. He's hitting 125, no homers or ribbies. Five up, five strikeouts. Against the Cubs right-hander, Kerry Wood. One ball, no strikes. Well, usually you'll see one of the guys lay down a bunt. But I don't think that guy is going to be Dave Clark. <laughs> the 1-0. Swung on high fly ball into center. It's playable for Brett Brown. He's got it. And that retires the side. Six up, six down after one and a half scoreless at the friendly confines. Mark Grace will lead it off for the Cubs here in the second scoreless duel. At Wrigley Field, the Cubs trying to get a game back from the front running Astros. Cubs at 16 and 15. We're four games back. The Reds a game behind us, and we trail the Cardinals by a game. St. Louis still struggling away from home. But Mark Grace hasn't been struggling of late. He's got a nine-game hitting streak. And Reynolds ready to go. Toward third. Under the glove of Howell in the left field. And they give him a base hit. He's trying for two. The throw, terrible. And into the Houston bullpen. And Grace all the way to third. A double and an error. And the error to the Astro left fielder Dave Clark. Well, Howell lets this one play him. And then Dave Clark has some problems as Mark Grace decides to test the arm of Dave Clark. And the throw is errant. So there is the go ahead run just 90 feet away. The way Kerry Wood is throwing, one run becomes very important. So a fly ball could tally the first run of the afternoon as Henry stands in. One ball, no strikes. Astros are going to concede the run on a ground ball in the infield, trying to stay out of the beginning. They've got the infield back. So Henry needs some contact. He's hitting 240 with eight homers, 20 batted in. And a good block by Osmus. Two balls, no strikes. Reynolds already has one wild pitch, and that one bounced about three feet in front of home plate. Osmus did a nice job of blocking it. Henry has struggled with the bat of late, but a chance to pick up a ribby here. It's 3 and 0 now. He's 4 for his last 41. The 3-0. 3 and 1. It looks like Reynolds is going to stay away from Henry, so he's got to look away and he just whacked Brad Osmus right in the mask on his follow through with his swing. Osmus is laughing. You don't yeah. think we can get a catcher's interference on that? No, he got a face burger for his efforts. The 3 1 to the right side, but foul. And the count now three balls, two strikes. Jeff Blauser, the Cubs shortstop, waiting on deck. 
Cubs trying to break on top here in the early going against the first place Astros. We've led the last two games and we haven't been able to hold it the last two days. The 3 2. High drive right center field. That's deep enough to score the run. Moises Alou will haul it in. Tagging from third is Grace. It's an RBI sack fly for Henry, and the Cubs lead it one to nothing. That's a first sacrifice fly for Henry. And that's the ninth for the Cubs this year, and RBI number 21. And the Cubs have the lead. Well, that's one thing Kerry Wood has had the benefit of, Steve. He has gotten pretty good run support for this Cub team all season long. Two starts ago, the Cubs put a a huge number on the board against the Dodgers in Hideo Nomo. They scored three against the Cardinals in the first in his last start. They've given him a one run lead here in the second so far today at Wrigley Field. I think this team is starting to feel very comfortable when Kerry goes to the mound. And they just play a lot looser. Blouser chops it to third. Howell will make the play with ease. And there are two down. So two outs and Sandy Martinez the cup catcher will take his first shots at Shane Reynolds. It looks like Kerry Wood has solved the problem of the Astros running game. You just don't allow anybody to get on you don't have to worry about the stolen base and it doesn't matter who's catching whether it's Sandy Martinez or anybody else. Well that noted baseball philosopher my dad told me many many years ago you can't steal first. They're having a hard time making contact against the young fireballer. That's out of the zone. 2 0 to the Cub catcher, Sandy Martinez. Playing in his sixth game this year, he's had but six at bats. And he shows good patience, 3 0. This guy has a great arm behind the plate. Does Sandy. And we'll see if he has a chance to display it. He draws the two out walk. But Jeff Penlin has been working hard with Kevin Ory, and here's an opportunity for Kevin to try to break out of it. Now they've opened him up somewhat. Obviously, everybody around the league knows that Kevin has had some problems getting the ball out of his kitchen, getting around on the ball inside, and there's a look at Jeff Penlin. Who suggested to Kevin that he open up that front foot slightly so that his hips can clear and he can get his hands through. For he has been jammed a lot, and that's where Reynolds starts him inside. Nothing in one. The depths of Kevin's slump, he's four for his last 46, and has hit the ball out of the infield only 14 times during that stretch. So he has really hit a, a tough spot. One ball, one strike. His average down to 185. His last home run, April 1st. But maybe today's the day he's going to bust out of it against the first place Houston Ball Club. Sandy, a short lead over at first, not going. And Kevin swung a little early. It looked like the split finger, and that one just dropped out of the zone. Cubs and Cardinal fans in attendance today. Yeah, how they get seated together. The one two just missed. It's two and two. Speaking of the Cardinals, they'll be in Pittsburgh tonight. We'll look at the Giants starting tomorrow. They play the Marlins tonight down in South Florida. The two two swing animus. And Ori strikes out, and that retires the Cubs in the second. One run, one hit, one error, one left. After two, Cubs have a 1 0 lead. An unearned run, the difference so far. The Cubs lead it 1 0. We want to pass along a lot of birthday greetings today. Harry Steinberg used to work at Wrigley Field way back in the 20s. He celebrates his 89th birthday today. Happy birthday as well to Susan Crown. Joe Andretti 77 today his grandson Jim at the ballpark wanted to pass that along and happy 54th wedding anniversary to Jimmy Farrell and his wife Eleanor Jimmy the umpires room attended here at the ballpark. 
Ricky Gutierrez will lead off the Astro third. And he finally makes contact and fouls it into the upper deck. Well, he was one of the culprits from last night as Mark Clark chose to pitch to him, and twice he burned him with a single and a double, and two runs batted in. He's hitting a hefty 352 on the year, but he's behind two strikes right now. Mr. Woods' fastball is a mere illusion. They have not been able to hit him. Just throw one upstairs higher than high, and you'll probably get him. He tried but the shortstop laid off big group here from Drake University in Des Moines headed up by Jim and Ruth Mills and Hans and Sonia Hansen. One and two. He stays alive. Pitch count often key with a power pitcher like Wood. He threw 24 through two innings. And again the Cubs would love a nice Long outing for it to the left side off Ori's glove into left field for a base hit. Well, that was the first breaking ball that hung up there slightly, and Gutierrez, who's been red hot, gets the first hit of the day. Only the second man to make contact against Kerry Wood. And the one thing that you worry about with Kerry, who doesn't use a slide step, is base runners. And watch it again as Ori goes to his left, as it just tip off the glove, and no chance to make a play. So Gutierrez. Who runs fairly well and will run often. Probably getting a lead at first, and he's three out of six in stolen bases. And Brad Osmus, who had been slumping until he got to town, is the hitter. And a strike called. Osmus hitting 161 with two homers, seven runs batted in. One of those homers came last night. Gutierrez measures that lead. He's got a good one. Not going. And the pitch popped foul and out of play. The Astros lead the National League by far with 44 stolen bases. As Larry Durker has said, we also get thrown out quite a bit. They've been gunned down 21 times, but he says you put the pressure on the defense if you run. And you leave it up to the pitcher and catcher to both make pretty good plays to get you out. Not going the pitch is way high. One and two. Power pitchers sometimes take a long time to get the ball to home plate. But Woods got such great velocity. And Martinez behind the plate with his great arm. Will that be enough to be the equalizer? We'll see. Now it's two and two. Well there's no doubt that Sandy Martinez is the best throwing of the Cub catchers. He's got a quick release. He's normally very accurate. Two balls two strikes. And now time is called by the Astro catcher. You don't want to even talk to Kerry Wood right now about a slide step or any alteration to his motion. You just want him to throw strikes. And the rest will come later. Again into foul ground and over the top. Hopefully that's not headed toward Mr. Santos car again. Looked to me like Sandy was ready to try a pickoff play at first base if that one would have gone by Osmus. Gutierrez was straying somewhat on the secondary lead. Not going the 2 2 is high three balls two strikes first one of those. Mr. Wood has faced in this ball game today. Well, this is important. If you don't get Osmus, then you set up the automatic bunt and put runners at second and third for BGO if Reynolds is successful. So you want to throw a strike here. Three and two. Got him swinging. Snap throw to first. But Gutierrez back standing. Osmus asks, was it a strike? Jerry Meal says, yes, it would have been had you not swung. And Kerry Wood with six strikeouts already in the game. He throws that fastball out away from Osmus. No chance here. And Sandy Martinez just tries to pick off Gutierrez. And now the bunt situation, but it's tough to bunt this young man. That fastball very lively. You'll see a lot of pop ups on bunts with Kerry Wood throwing. Reynolds hitting 133 on the year. Squares lays down a dandy. Who wants it? Grace does, and he'll throw to first on the sacrifice. So Gutierrez to second. And a sacrifice scored three four now two outs. Mills 
take a look at a cornucopia of strikeouts. There's a fastball and a great hook and some more heat and a little more heat and yet another fastball. So Kerry Wood has everything well intact but now you're facing a man for the second time and a quality hitter and BGO in these situations loves to go to right and right center and pick up RBIs. Good speed in the box good speed on the bases for the Astros who look to tie the game in the third one on two outs one nothing Cubs. One and oh think about 81 runs batted in last year for a leadoff hitter. Vigio hit 309 22 home runs stole 47 bases and scored 146 runs himself. It's a balk. a balk on wood. Well Kerry Wood for the second time this year has balked and he did it because Jeff Blauser broke in back of Gutierrez at second Kerry flinched. And he knows exactly what he did. So when Sandy went out to talk with him, he says, I understand what I did. Let's go get BGO. Watch it again. And you see he's mad at himself. Just a little bit of a bobble. Now in Los Angeles, that balk really unnerved the young man. He works off the windup now and a quick strike to even the count one and one. There's Phil Regan the pitching coach has to like what he's seen so far runner at third two outs to the shortstop easy play there and the Cubs out of the inning no runs one hit no errors one left after two and a half Kerry Wood and the Cubs lead the Astros one to nothing. We head to the bottom of the third inning Kerry Woods going to lead things off and Cubs fans Saturday May 9th Duncan Imperial Yo-Yo Day compliments of Scala's preferred the Italian beef and sausage of Wrigley Field. The first 10,000 children 13 and under attending the Cubs Giants game May 9th receive a limited edition Duncan Imperial Yo-Yo plenty of good seats available at the Wrigley Field box office or by phone at 312-831 Cubs. Kerry Wood takes a strike leading off the Cubs third. An unearned run the only tally by either team so far today. And another strike. It's nothing in two. Kerry has struck out six Reynolds has struck out four. Milwaukee is trailing at home again to the Padres. It's one nothing in the bottom of the eighth inning at County Stadium. Phillies over the Rockies four nothing in the top of the fifth at Veterans Stadium. Atlanta over the Dodgers six to nothing after six. The rest of the National League a bit later on this evening. I'd like to pass along happy 75th birthday to Del Marsh looking on in Long Beach California. A few of your Astro friends. We wanted to wish you well today. One and two to carry. Strike three called. There's out number one. Well, both these right handers really pitching very, very well today. Eleven strikeouts in three innings of play. Hey guys turn around there's a ball game going on for goodness sakes. Well, let's see if Brant Brown might think about a bunt try to put a little pressure on Jack Howell. He tries it's a very good bunt. Reynolds not in time. Good call Stoney. Brant Brown with an infield bunt hit. Anytime you see that third baseman a step in back of the bag you have to try it. And that's exactly what Brant Brown saw. He not only tried it, but he did it very well. Excellent bunt. If you've got good speed, this will pull those men in at the corners, make it a lot easier as Reynolds gets to the ball, doesn't make a good throw, and Brant is aboard. That's his second hit of the series. The other left the ballpark. And we'll see if the Cubs try to put him in motion. Brown has attempted two steals. He's been successful twice. Morandini. 
Struck out looking on a very questionable check swing. He tries to bunt his way on and fouls it away. Cubs leading 1 0. Let's pause a moment for station identification. With Steve Stone, this is Chip Carey from Wrigley Field. It's a 1 0 Cub lead. And the Birds are getting their fill today as well. The pitch. It's 1 and 1. These Astros have been tough to run on. Just six stolen bases, including one last night by Sammy Sosa. They've gunned down 11 would be base stealers. So they've been successful 44 times and given up just six and that should put you in first place which is exactly where the Astros are one and two to Mickey happy seventh birthday today to Jeff Davis he and his dad at the ballpark today Bob and Norma Hyden from Vancouver Washington their first time back at Wrigley Field in 50 years they say that's the home of one Randall Kirk Myers Vancouver Washington and Mike and Jennifer Anise are here on their honeymoon. Congratulations to them. And a lovely day for baseball. The Cubs try to get back to two games over 500 here on the 6th of May. Giants will come to town and plenty of seats available for the final four games of this homestand. All four of them, by the way, brought to you on WGN. Brown, a good lead, draws another throw. Tomorrow's pitching matchups. Jeremy Gonzalez and Mark Gardner 705 Central Time are our time Friday a 220 game Steve Traxel Danny Darwin Saturday Kevin Tappany Sean Estes Sunday Mark Clark and Oral Hershiser then we head west and Morandini strikes out for the second time in the game and Reynolds has his sixth punch out of the ball game that split finger is awfully tough today as Shane Reynolds has Mickey Morandini well out in front of this one. The bottom just falls out. And strikeout to walk ratio. You can see Shane Reynolds just about four to one. Not bad. He's six to one today, but Sosa standing in the way here in the third. He was a strikeout victim swinging his first time. Sammy again with a 12 game hitting streak. And lifetime five for 21 against the Astro right-hander who coming in really struggled at Wrigley Field had an earned run average over eight today he's been very tough and unearned run is what has him behind on the scoreboard so far again Brown sent back to the first base back. The Astros keep doing it on the road. They've played already 19 of their 31 games away from the Astrodome. And they've won 12 and lost seven. Well, conversely, the Cubs in a stretch where they play 33 of 50 at home. So while the Astros have to be road warriors, the Cubs have to take advantage of the home cooking because when it all evens out, the Astros will have an advantage the last couple of months of this season. Cubs have to put together some quality home stands if they're going to stay around in this race. Hitters pitch here 2 and 0. Oh. On the outside edge, two balls and a strike. Jerry Meals has had a very generous outer half of the plate today. But he's been very consistent for both Reynolds and Kerry Wood. Well knowing that you just have to go out there and get it and Sammy has been able to hit the ball very well to right and right center field and I would assume that Reynolds is going to stay away. Brad measures the lead again. The two one. Little blooper into shallow center. Biggio can't make the play. It's in for a hit for Sosa. And they're at the corners with two out. And a 13 game hit streak for Sammy. And let's see Steve, who's cleaning up in baseball, brought to you by Hoover. National League hits Dante Bichette, Derek Bell, and Sammy Sosa. 
with 44. So Sammy doing a great job in the early going. And there's a look at Sammy just muscling this ball out over the head of Craig Biggio, putting runners at the corners. And the Cubs looking to expand on that one run lead. And Mark Grace doubled and scored that only Cub run back in the second. One to nothing lead. The Dave Clark throwing error has loomed very large so far. Grace could make it 2 nothing with a base hit here. One ball no strikes. Mark entered the game hitting 316. No home runs 14 batted in. Lifetime 10 for 24 against Reynolds. It's 2 and 0. Oh. Well, this isn't really the best time to send Sammy because if you keep him at first, you keep the hole open on the right side. And if you do send him in this situation, they'll probably just put Grace, who has been very tough on Reynolds, on first and bring up Henry, who's 3 for 28 lifetime against Reynolds. Short lead by Sammy over at first. But he draws a throw anyhow. Two balls, no strikes. They're real worried about Sosa. Now Brad Osmus wants to settle down Mr. Reynolds. Well, I think he's going to tell him, don't worry that much about Sammy because he's not the man that's going to drive home Brant Brown. It's going to be Mark Grace. Two and O oh to the Cub cleanup man Mark Grace. He's got a 10 game hitting streak. Good stop again by Osmus. Well, it's three and O. Oh. It's obvious that Reynolds doesn't want any part of Grace. Watch Osmus as he saves a run on this fork ball. Dropping to his knees keeps it right in front of him. The 3 0. Base is loaded. Brown stays at third, Sosa to second, Grace at first. Now Henry Rodriguez with a sack fly RBI is the hitter with two men out. Cubs have been very successful this year in two out situations. 61 of their 144, make that 145 runs this year, have come with two down. And Henry has driven in six of those 61 in this situation. Reynolds will work off the windup now. Nothing in one. Three Grand Slam homers, a 250 batting average for Henry. But at three for 28 with just a lone double, he struggled against Shane Reynolds. It's a good time to break out of it. The count evens a ball and a strike. Cubs leading the Astros 1 0 here in the home half of the third. The runners lead 1 and 2. Well, Shane Reynolds knows the way his counterpart Kerry Wood is throwing at this point that this very well might be the ball game. You give up a base hit here, you allow the Cubs to score another couple of runs. It's going to be very tough. Jeff Pentland trying to get Henry's swing back on track after a very hot start. But the one-two pitch is strike three called on the outer half, and that retires the side. 
Reynolds strikes out the Cubs three times in the third. He's got seven punch outs in the game and after three it's still one nothing Cubbies. We go to the fourth one nothing Cubs have the lead the two three four spot due up for Houston here in the fourth inning. That's Bell Bagwell and Jack Howell. Derek Bell came up with the Toronto Blue Jays and while a member of the Blue Jays Dave Winfield and Joe Carter decided to play a little trick on him so they got the keys to his truck and drove it on to the field at the brand new stadium there in Toronto. And and they had the public address announcer announce that as part of fan appreciation weekend they were going to raffle off Derek Bell's truck and here was a young guy not making any money and he saw his truck on the field and his face like dropped to the dugout floor. Well they thought he was going to run out after the truck as they were driving around and around so they finally had to tell him that it was just a joke they weren't going to raffle off the I only truck that he ever had. Then he started laughing was very happy when he found out that he would be able to indeed keep his own truck. The one one to him popped up. And into the seats and Kerry's got him set up for another strikeout it's one and two. He's a different hitter now than when he was with. The Toronto Ball Club and later with San Diego much more confident says he loves to hit in the two spot. In the four spot he just didn't feel like he could contribute he's not really a power hitter and he felt there was a lot of pressure on him there. So he loves hitting in between BGO and Bagwell and certainly his numbers look like it. Two and two. Bell leading the National League in hitting with a 403 average. He has the fifth most runs batted in with 28. And he's hit six home runs. He serves that ball into right, and Sammy's got a beat on it. And there's out number one. Base is empty, one out for Jeff Bagwell. It's been 68 at bats since the Astro first baseman has hit a home run. He's hitting 248 on the year with four homers, 15 batted in. Not Jeff Bagwell like numbers, but you know by season's end, he's going to be right up there at the 30 home run, 100 RBI tally, and he was right on that fastball. Nothing in one. Bagwell, a very aggressive hitter. He would just as soon have it middle in like most power hitters. And his hitting instructor Tom McCraw wonders how he can hit out of that crouch. So do I. Well, 43 home runs will tell you that it's easily done, especially when he drives in 135. Up and into him. Two balls and a strike. That's one of the reasons why he wears that padding on his left hand. Because when he steps toward the pitcher, you see that padded area he steps toward the pitcher he locks himself in then has to move back away the hands stay over the inside corner and he gets hit three and one now. So be careful here. Oh. Well, he really is getting confidence with that breaking ball isn't he well, that, was, that one over a beautiful pitch. that was the little slider that he throws. And it frees, freezes a hitter on three and one, obviously. Got him with it again. <laughs> Seven strikeouts. This is almost unfair. When you throw 97 98 and then you can throw the hook, a knee bender. And as you can see from the Southwest Airlines camera, you can see the knees buckle and it snaps over the outside corner. There is a Southwest Airlines plane view camera high atop Wrigley Field. And there's the K Club. You guys might need to head to a photocopy machine before this game's over. He's already struck out seven. Or a Kmart. <laughs> Do they sell those K's there? Sure. That's where they get all the big K's. No balls and a strike to Howell. It's even one and one. Would strike out high came against the Cardinals. He punched out nine Redbirds that game. Two and one now to Howell.
Oh. Tell you, it looks to me like Sandy's got a brand new catcher's mitt, and as hard as Wood throws, I'll bet it takes him maybe two hitters to have that thing nice and broken in. Well, he better have a little extra padding in there. He's his hand's going to be about twice the size as the other. Strike three called. A laser beam on the outer half. He struck out eight. After three and a half, Kerry Wood ringing up the Astros and leading one to nothing. Jeff Blauser to lead things off for the Cubs here in the fourth. It's a one nothing game. Houston with one single scratch hit. That by Gutierrez, the shortstop, back in the third. Ah, you wonder if the controversy will begin, whether that should be a hit or an error in today's game. We will see as Kerry Wood takes the mound in the fifth. But first things first, here's Blauser against Reynolds, who has pitched equally brilliantly. He has struck out seven Cubs, and he's given up only two hits. Blauser's always had good numbers against Shane Reynolds. Let's see if he can lead off the fourth and put the Cubs in good shape for some insurance. Two balls, no strikes to Jeff. A ground out victim to third, his first trip to the dish. Hit hard and fair down the left field line. Blauser on his way to second. He had a hit last night, has a hit today. This one a stand up double, and again, the Astros throw the ball all over the ballpark. But no advance by Jeff, a leadoff double here in the fourth. Well, there's an example of not moving with the count. With the count 2 and 0, you got to figure that Blauser is going to try to pull the ball, and he pulls it right down the line past Jack Howell. And the Cubs in pretty good shape if Sandy can pull the ball. Second Cub extra base hit, and now Martinez, the hitter, he walked his first time up. Blauser at second with nobody out. Milwaukee has scored twice in the eighth. They now lead the Padres two to one. As San Diego hits in the top of the ninth. And now time called by the Cub catcher. Showed bunts and took it outside. One ball, no strikes. Tom Gamboa flashing the signs outside that third base coaching box. Message received by Martinez, and now he's ready to go. They're in at the corners, expecting a bunt. He's swinging, smacks it into right field. Can Blauser tag? There's the catch, but no advance. Bell with a very strong throw into third. So Sandy hit the ball to the right side, but hit it too high in the air into a man with a very good arm. And no advance by Plowser, and it costs the Cubs an out. Tony Gwynn just hit a solo home run for the Padres. It's 2 2 now in the ninth. Up in Milwaukee, and he hit it off Doug Jones. Doug Jones is starting to give up quite a few home runs, so guys are starting to wait back on that changeup. That's at least five in his last three appearances. Here's Kevin Ory. Kevin struck out his first time, and he hits that one foul past third. How long does it take? An adjustment by a hitter to really take hold, Steve. I know Jeff Pentland talking to us before the game. Said he's tried to open Kevin up and keep his hands back and such. How long before you see substantial gains from him? Well, I think every hitter is completely different. It depends on how quickly he takes to it, how much batting practice he gets a chance to experience. When you're trying to learn a new style or adjust to a new style during the course of a big league game, it becomes a little more difficult. Hopefully, Kevin can assimilate it quickly and put it into practice. But the pitching pattern has been the same every at bat for him. Inside, inside, inside. 
And then they do sweep that breaking ball away as you look at the teacher and pupil. And hopefully Kevin Ory can shake these early season doldrums. One ball one strike. Inside corner one and two. Cubs leading one to nothing. An unearned run in the second. I got a feeling you're going to see that split finger right here. That's how he got him in the second inning after setting him up inside. One and two. The Reynolds pitch. Strike three called outside corner. So there are two men out now. Ori is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Kerry Wood has a chance to help himself, and at times he swung the bat pretty well. This is a good pitch on the outside corner. And after a steady diet of inside pitches, that outside corner looks a little bit further away. And right now, Kevin Ori just looks confused. Reynolds strikeout high was 12. He's done that three times. Did it in 1996 against the Cardinals. He already has eight in today's game, and we're only in the fourth. Both pitchers with eight. The termites have invaded the bat racks for both ball clubs. And the pitchers have been superb. San Diego, by the way, has him first and third with one out now. Trying to take the lead in Milwaukee. Nothing in one to carry, whose first big league hit scored a run. But this time he'll be denied. Good play by Bagwell. The pitcher covers, and that retires the side. Cubs get a leadoff double, can't advance him. And after four complete, it's still a one to nothing Chicago game. One nothing score after four. Welcome back to Wrigley Field. Chip Carey and Steve Stone. If you don't like strikeouts, you probably don't like this game. 16 by both pitchers through four innings. Well, not a lot of contact. You can understand it with Carey Wood throwing rockets down there. And Shane Reynolds has matched him pitch for pitch. Just an error. The difference in this one, the run unearned, the Cubs will take it. And right now, Carey has things well in hand. Just one hit, and that could have gone either way. We'll see if they change that scoring as the afternoon continues. That's the only blemish for Wood today. Well, right now, Kerry Wood isn't thinking about anything but the next man that he faces. And today, he's getting everything over the plate. And so that's a refreshing change from some of his earlier performances. Moise Salu, the first man he faces here in the fifth. Salu struck out swinging his first time and falls behind again. Boy, what a delight it is to see this kid. With such great stuff getting ahead more frequently in the count. With this powerful Astro team, now it's nothing in two. No question about it, he is starting to feel much more comfortable. The 0 2. Strike three call. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Nine strikeouts ties his career high. Well Jerry Meals is calling a fairly generous corner but he's done it on both sides of the plate for both teams and you just have to go out there and get it that's a pretty good pitch and if you're not going to pull the trigger you're going to get rung up. So see you later seven straight retired by Wood. And now here's Clark who flying to center his first time you got to watch Clark he's a veteran dead fastball hitter. So he's going to start him out with a hook and take his chances. And he gets ahead nothing in one. Well this doesn't look at all like the guy who struggled so badly out in Los Angeles against the Dodgers. I mean Kerry Woods pitching not like a 20 year old but like a 20 year veteran today. And I think Dave Clark thought that ball was high. And Jerry Meals says it was just high enough to be a strike. Pally get back in there. The 0 2. Strike three called another breaking ball. Ten strikeouts for Wood. First time in his career he's reached double digits. Well that curveball it's spinning so quickly you can probably hear it. Whoa. Catching it below the waist and no doubt about it you saw it came in just about waist high and Dave Clark. Well his hands aren't stinging because he never took the bat off his shoulder. 
Well here's the only man that's hit him so far it's Ricky Gutierrez and some might wonder whether it was a clean hit or not. He singled back in the third leading things off for the Astros. One and one. You can take a look at the way Sandy Martinez gets as low a target as he possibly can get. Fastball away. That's where he got it one and two. Well I'd have to go back to that real good curveball here. Gutierrez pretty good fastball hitter. Most strikeouts by a rookie pitcher Dick Drott and Bert Hooten 15 for the Cubs. The mistake Wood made to Gutierrez was a breaking ball if I remember correctly yeah. that was up a little bit. He got it on the inner portion of the plate didn't break real well. Didn't look anything like the curve balls to Dave Clark. And here comes the slider. Let's see. Two and two. On official scores nightmare kind of game so far today. Only one hit surrendered by Wood. He has struck out the last four men he's faced. Make it five in a row. And 11 in the game. Three up, three down in the fifth. It's still one to nothing. He's amazing. Steve Stone, Chip Carey, our entire WGN crew back at Wrigley Field. One to nothing is our score. Kerry Wood, a brilliant outing today. Well, folks, you're watching something special here today. This young man has got everything going. He's getting the ball over the plate, and here's the one thing that has stopped him from a no-hitter. This ball hitting off the glove, caroming into left field. That's the lone hit, but 11 strikeouts, and he's making a very good hitting ball club look awfully bad here today through five. He's sent down nine in a row. He has struck out the last five Astro hitters. And to the top of the Cub order we go here in the fifth. Shane Reynolds has pitched that badly himself. Don't forget he has eight strikeouts in the game. He's given up only four Cub hits as well. But an unearned run his undoing today. Have a lot of storms in the area so you'd like to get this one in as quickly as you can. A ball and a strike to Brandt who struck out and has singled but was stranded back in the third. The Cubs have left five men on through four. Ripped into right center field for a base hit by Brown. The more you see him, the more you like him. He's two out of three. Well, with nobody out looking for some insurance, this is a good time for either Morandini to bunt the ball or use the hit and run. I'd just as soon a hit and run situation. Mickey is fanned twice, but you force him to concentrate if you run with Brown. Brandt again measures off a pretty good size lead over there. And a strike to Morandini. Lights are on here at the ballpark. Game time temperature 64 degrees. Winds were out of the southeast at 7. It is cooling considerably as the front starts to move through. 0 oh 2 to Mickey. There's a whole lot of fans that miss this one here today a crowd that looks to be about 18 19,000 but they're being treated to one of the fine performances by a rookie pitcher that they have ever seen. 11 strikeouts the season high for the Cubs it's a career high for Wood so far and he's only in the fifth. One and two now. Larry Walker just hit a grand slam for the Rockies. They're tied 5 5 in Philadelphia. Mickey lays off the off speed pitch. It's 2 and 2. Braves carved up the Dodgers 7 0. Greg Maddox beat Darren Dreifer today. The Dodgers committed three errors in that ballgame. And Milwaukee batting in the bottom of the ninth, tied 2 2 with the Padres. The pitch. It's full now three and two. Well, now I'd assume you're going to run with Brown but 
Dan Radisson over there telling him make sure that Reynolds delivers this ball home. You don't want to get picked off. But you need a big enough lead because Osmuth gets rid of the ball quickly. Three balls, two strikes, short lead. I'll throw back to first. If this is a split finger, this would be a tough ball to handle for Osmus. Now he's going with the heat. The payoff runner goes. Swing, bouncing ball back to the mound. He'll go to second one. Relay to first. What a double play. 1 6 3, the double play. Brant Brown a little shaken up as he tried to take Gutierrez out at second base. Good effort by Gutierrez as he gets the throw on the hit and run. He was covering. They figured Morandini would pull the ball, so they've got the shortstop covering, and Reynolds does a nice job of making sure of one. Then Gutierrez, using the bag as a shield, makes the double play. You got a couple of choices if you're the pivot man, and watch Gutierrez. He steps back, and Brown jams his knee on the bag. Well, that's why he hobbled off. Hope he's all right. So base is empty, two outs for Sammy, who singled his last time up. One ball, no strikes. Cubs could ill afford to lose yet another center fielder, so I think Brent Brown's going to be okay. Those resilient young legs. The 1 0. Oh, he rips it into the seats foul. Watch the play and watch how hard Brant Brown hits the bag. Gutierrez just takes a step back to avoid the sliding Brown. And Brandt stops abruptly, slid a little late, and hurt himself a touch, but he's all right. A ball and a strike to Mr. Sosa. Well, this guy does have some nasty breaking stuff, doesn't he? One and two. Both pitchers doing it differently. Kerry Wood doing it with a great breaking ball. A good slider and just raw power. And Shane Reynolds doing it with craft and guile. A ball and two strikes to Sammy, the pitch. Got him. And the inning is over. Nine strikeouts for Reynolds, 11 for Wood. To the sixth inning we go, and the Cubs in front by a run. Well it's been said of a very close friend of mine the lights are on and no one's home at least that's the case for the Astros today. Kerry Wood has struck out 11 of the Houston's today. And he gets ahead of the number eight hitter Brad Osmus. Kevin Wood Ory, has retired nine in a row. Kevin Ory in close to third and it's a good idea because Osmus will occasionally bunt. Way high with a fastball one ball one strike. Well Osmus has pretty good speed. If he does hit it, it's going to right or right center. One and two. The Brewers have beaten the Padres. Mark Loretta with an RBI double in the ninth off Carlos Reyes wins it three to two over San Diego. All the runs came in the eighth and ninth in that game. And now the count two and two. Well. The outside corner is generous. Throw the heat on the outside corner, and you will fan number 12 and sixth in a row. And he's going out there with the fastball. The 2 2 to the second baseman. Mickey 2 and E. One out. That's the hardest hit ball the Astros have had today. But Carey is still retired 10 in a row. And now the pitcher Shane Reynolds. Reynolds a sacrifice his first time up. What's frightening if you're the opposition Kerry hasn't walked anybody today and normally that's the only time when you can get to this kid. Oh. And it's not as if he's lost any heat off the gas so far. Brad Osmus opens up the sixth inning by grounding out to Mickey Morandini. Kerry Woods retired 10 men in succession. And now the Astro pitcher behind no balls, two strikes. 
See you later. Twelve strikeouts and two outs in the Houston sixth. Well, Shane Reynolds says, I still have to pitch. There's no reason to hurt my hands on a swing. So you can see 12 right across the board. Many of them caught looking. Yeah, we have to check those guys out and see if they got him in order. It's seven and five, seven called strikeouts, five swinging. So two up, two down. He's retired 11 in a row. Craig Biggio, the Astro hitter. Every member of the Astros has struck out at least once today. Biggio opened the game, striking out swinging. A one hitter so far for Wood. He's in the sixth. Oh. <laughs> That's just not fair. Nothing in one. Biggio just wanted a bit of a timeout as he turned to Jerry Meals. He loosened up all the vertebrae on that cut. <laughs> yeah, he did. I think the best pitch Wood made today was the first pitch of the game. The one that knocked the mask off the umpire. You could see Biggio turn around and look as he fouls that one away as if to say I don't really think I saw that pitch. I think he might have hurt himself on that first swing. He's still loosening up and he's taking some very defensive swings against Kerry Wood. You never see Craig Biggio doing that. He needs a new star on that helmet. Too much pine tar is taking the decal off. The 0 2. One ball, two strikes. And Kerry Wood has struck out 12 Astros into the sixth inning. Vigio still trying to loosen himself up. It's a man with the second longest consecutive game streak played behind Cal Ripken. Oh, that hit him in the back of the helmet. Let's see if he's all right. And we told you when this game started that BJ would probably get hit today with a curveball, but we thought that he would lean into it. This time he's fortunate to get hit on that padded elbow, so he's going to be all right. Yeah, I thought it was the elbow or the back of the helmet, I beg your pardon, when it hit him because it made that funny plasticky sound, but it was the elbow guard that he got. Right, it's that plastic elbow guard, and that's why he wears it. Now, this one he didn't lean into. He kind of leans away from it and gets that elbow up to protect his head. And now you have to watch the stolen base. So, Sandy Martinez, for the first time, put to the test with BGO at first. And he's stolen 14 bases, been caught twice. Active leaders hit five pitches, and Craig Biggio right there at the top. So he's aboard with two outs. And Bell the batter. He has struck out and he's flied out. He's not going the first time, and that pitch popped up. In play, Mark Grace says he's got it. He's in foul ground. He does have it. Sad retire. No runs, no hits. One man left after five and a half. It's still a one nothing Cup game. Our Discover Card Payback Playback today takes us back to May 16, 1996, when Amore Telemaco won in his Major League debut. No hitting the Astros through five and two thirds innings before a Jeff Bagwell single. Then Sammy Sosa unloaded twice in the seventh as the Cubs scored 13 runs on the board in a 13 to 1 win. Amore's first win, Sammy's two blasts in the seventh, are today's Discover Card Payback Playback. On to the bottom of the sixth inning. Cubs leading one to nothing. Mark Grace to lead it off. He couldn't check his swing. It's 0 and 1. Boy, some, these two pitchers have been brilliant today. And there's some very nasty weather all around the ballpark. So fortunately, the Cubs have the lead, and it doesn't look like Kerry Wood wants to relinquish it anytime soon. About as weak a swing as you'll ever see Mark Grace take. That gives you an idea of how good Reynolds' stuff has been today. He has struck out nine Cubs. But he trails one to nothing. We told you one run could be the difference in this one, and it has been a gem of a pitching battle. Kerry Wood has retired. Twelve Astros on strikes. 
Grace behind one and two. He has one of the five Cub hits. That's extended his hit streak to ten games. He scored the only run. He flirts with a base hit there. Oh, what a play, Biggio. And he got him by a step. Well, Biggio told both Chip and I that it was very difficult when you have to go back on the grass here because it slopes down from the playing surface. And he says he tries to cut everything off on the dirt, but he wasn't able to do it. A fine play moving to his left, a 360, and he guns down Mark Grace. And this is a good effort. Biggio says, on a ball like that, you run the risk of it flattening out, going under your glove, and you wonder where it went. Well, that time it stuck right in the glove, and he robbed Mark Grace. And he said it was almost, it's almost luck if the ball finds its way into the leather, and that time it did, and he made a great play to retire Mark. So with one out, base is empty. Henry Rodriguez, the batter. I think he's you, 0 for one with a strikeout and a sack fly RBI. I think, Chip, if you're Larry Durker right now, what you pray for is about an hour and a half rain delay. Get Kerry Wood out of there and hope to come back at the bullpen. The way Kerry's throwing now, he's just unhittable. The Astros have tomorrow off. The Cubs don't, so we'll wait this one out. Should the weather turn nasty, the bad stuff all around the ballpark, but nary a raindrop yet. Two and one to Henry. Cubs are leading one to nothing. It's two and two. A tough inning in the seventh. Bagwell, Howell, and Alou, if anybody gets on Clark for the Astros. So Kerry Woods just sawing through an excellent hitting lineup so far, but he still has a little work to do before they can put this one in the win column. Two balls, two strikes. Now the umbrellas start to pop up and Henry swings and chased a bad ball. That's 10 strikeouts for Mr. Reynolds and two down. We'll take a look at a split finger fastball and now Henry is three for 30 lifetime against Shane Reynolds who has been mighty tough today one unearned run. The difference in this ball game, and now the rains start to come down a little more persistent. Here's Jeff Blauser. He's grounded to third, and he has double. That ball hit into center field. It'll drop in front of Alou. So Jeff, a two-hit game, maybe a sign that his bat's starting to come back to life. He's two for three today now eight for 19 lifetime against Reynolds. Well the Cubs are going to put together a prolonged streak. They're going to have to get some production out of the bottom part of the order and if Jeff Blauser is going to hit down in that six and seven spot. If he starts producing it's going to open up some things for some of the other hitters. Sandy Martinez the hitter he's walked and fly to right. Nothing in one our senior producer director of Cubs baseball is Arnie Harris. Today's game produced by Pete Toma, our associate producer Mark Brady, the coordinating producer of Cubs baseball, Kim Fields, Kathy Kerr with us in the WG, WGN booth here at Wrigley Field. Well, Sandy's done his job today. The Astros haven't stole a base. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Only had two guys on today. Gutierrez with a scratch single and Biggio hit by a pitch. And with Biggio on, Bell swung at the first pitch. Didn't give Biggio a chance to steal. On one toward third and Howell to an E knocks that down makes the play on the fly and that retires the Cubs in the sixth to the seventh we go Bagwell Howell and Alou will try to solve Kerry Wood in a one to nothing game. The rain starting to fall a little harder now as Jeff Bagwell stands in against Kerry Wood. Bagwell 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. We asked Tom McCraw about his hitting slump earlier today. He's been my most complicated uh, situation that I've had since I've been a hitting instructor. I still haven't figured out his batting stance. I know he has good mental discipline, uh, but even though he's struggling, he's still making contributions. He's getting the walks for us. He'll get a base hit every now and then, and he's still basing. So even though he's not hitting the long ball, uh, he's got 15, 16 RBIs, which isn't bad, but for Bagwell standards, 
it's not as good as we know that he's going to do. So I have the luxury maybe of realizing that Jeff has a tremendous track record, and at the end of the season, he'll have his numbers will all be in place. Two and two to him, however. Got to shut down the Astros this inning because the rains are coming, and they are going to be heavy. Ooh, that just missed. Three and two. Hasn't walked anybody so far. You don't want to start with Bagwell to lead off the inning. He's got good speed. Got it. 13 strikeouts. Well, it looked like Bagwell swung at ball four. That was a fastball up. It looked out of the strike zone, but you don't have much chance to decide with young Kerry Wood. Look at those gaudy numbers. One hit. No walks, 13 strikeouts. Hello, right by him. Swung late as they've done all day. Howell is 0 for 2. He has struck out twice. And this kid doesn't look like he is slowing down a bit. He's still bringing the ball in the upper 90s. That one slipped. And that's what you have to worry about with the soggy conditions. Now it's three and zero. Oh. I would give Howell two take signs because Kerry's starting to get that fastball up and out of the zone, and Howell hasn't done anything with it. Three and one. He went around. Three and two. That's why I said I'd give him two take signs, but Howell did swing at that. And that could wind up to really hurt the Astros. This fastball up and out of the zone, and Howell doesn't check his swing. Three balls, two strikes. 14. Once you swung at the 3 1 pitch, the 3 2 pitch, just unhittable upstairs, and Howell takes a seat as so many before him have. So, two up, two down. Here's Alou. And factor in the bad weather, it's tough to hit through the raindrops. Strike one. Let's pause a moment for station identification. Thunder rumbling overhead, and Alou lost the handle on the bat. He's down two strikes. This the 95th pitch of the game for Kerry Wood. He has struck out 14 Astros. He's given up only one hit. One ball, two strikes. Did he go? Yes, he did. He strikes out the side again. He's punched out 15. As we go to the seventh inning stretch, here's Joe Montagna with the Cubs leading one to nothing. Original bleacher bum, Joe Montagna, in singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game in honor of Harry. Well, I think Harry would approve. I dedicate this one to all the bleacher bums, past, present, and future. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and
The rain really starting to come now now here in the bottom half of the seventh inning Cubs leading one to nothing. You have to wonder how long the umpires are going to let this thing go on as Alou very frustrated. Tries to check his swing the appeal to Terry Tata he says nope you went around and you're number 15. And number 15 for the Cubs Kevin Ory is in the box Reynolds taking his sweet time he'd love to have the umpires call this thing. Ori went around and that strike one. Well, Joe Montaigne in the booth with us this afternoon. Couldn't think of a more appropriate singing of the seventh inning stretch. The one, two, three strikes, you're out. There have been 25 strikeouts in this game. What a way for you to join us at the ballpark. Oh, this is fantastic. This is this is what everybody comes for to hopefully come to that special game, which this one's turning out to be. Lifelong Cubs fan, huh? Oh yeah, I've been I've been I've, there's documentary proof with photographs of me <laughs> at five years old watching Hank Sauer bat on a black and white television. Then uh, toward third, Howell should throw him out, and he will one away. What do you think of this year's edition of the Cubs? Oh, they look terrific. I mean, this 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 really this really looks like you've got a nice. You know, mixture of um, youth and veterans, and and uh, well, as Carrie Wood, he's, he's she certainly got the the real stuff. He struck out 15 and a huge ovation for him today. He's 0 for 2. He's 0 for 2. Is Wood, and Reynolds will face him with one man out in the seventh. Cubs leading one to nothing, an unearned run. The difference. It's 0 and 1. You're in town for your two shows, the Bleacher Bums. Tell us about that. Yeah, actually, tomorrow evening we'll, we'll be performing for uh, National Public Radio um, a radio version of the play Bleacher Bums, which we first did in 1977. And we have the whole original cast coming together, including Dennis Franz and and uh, all the original Bleacher Bum actors that did it in '77. And uh, so that's very exciting for us 21 years later to, to do it again. Including Dennis Franz, who was yeah. in the original, that's right? That's right. He flies in tonight. He'll be here for the show tomorrow. And the show battles the raindrops. Pardon me. Two down. We've updated the show to make it a 98 lineup. So actually, Kerry Wood is the picture. Oh, is that right? The picture of record <laughs> in the, in the game guess, tomorrow. I guess the check from Steve Stone didn't get to you because yeah. I think he wanted to be in the play. <laughs> I did a game with Dennis uh, out in Los Angeles when uh, we had the. Sub broadcasters for Harry when he had his stroke, and there was 34 different broadcasters. Dennis was one of them, and he was a delight. To say hello to him. Oh, I will. And I'm sure he's happy to be back in Chicago. Yeah. We've got all the guys; they're all up in the sky box here. All the rest of the cast, they're oh, one, one of the boxes here today. So it's a, we're, we're so used to sitting in the bleachers; it's a treat to, to be in a, uh, uh, to see what that's like now. Now the Astro equipment band is going to come out and get a tongue depressor for Reynolds so he can clean the dirt from his spikes. The rain. Slowing down a little bit here. They haven't applied any of the diamond dry surface to the, the mound or the batter's box, but it still is raining pretty hard here at the ballpark. Well, you have a, a wonderful resume, Joe. Your films, The Godfather 3, Forget Paris, Searching for Bobby Fisher, Baby's Day Out, Airheads, a story about Steve Stone and I, Queen's Logic, <laughs> Wait Until Spring, Bandini, and Family Prayers. What's next for you? Well, I just completed a film for uh, HBO called The Rat Pack, which deals with Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin and that whole crew. Um, and then I did a, a play that I did with the Organic Theater back in the 70s called The Wonderful Ice Cream Soup. We finally made a movie of it 25 oh. years later for Disney with uh, Ray Bradbury did the screenplay and Stuart Gordon directed. And so that'll be coming out um, uh, as well as Woody Allen's next picture called Celebrity, which will be out in the fall. Which do you prefer, stage or screen, or does it matter? Oh, I, I mean, I just feel fortunate to be able to do. I mean, you guys, I think, can relate to that. Doing something that you love, you know, and make a living at it. So, uh, stage, screen, whatever, whatever the venue is, I, I enjoy having the opportunity to be an actor and, and to make a good living doing it. Well, obviously, you've been very, very successful at that, an Emmy Award. And how can folks, if they're interested in seeing your your play, how can they? Purchase tickets or is it sold out? Well, the actually the evening performance is sold out, but they've added another performance at 3:30 tomorrow afternoon out at the uh, it's the uh, North uh, North Shore it, Center. Is North that Shore it? Center in Skokie? in Skokie? That's it. And so I think there's still some tickets available for that 3:30 per, uh, performance. And like I said, we'll be recording it for radio, and then the radio broadcast I think is going to happen sometime in October. Well, maybe we'll see you not only at the play 
tomorrow, but maybe at the right. ballpark tomorrow night as well right. as the Giants will be in town. Joe, right. thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Chip. Congratulations on a great career, and don't be a stranger. Come see us anytime. Oh, I'd love to. Thanks and so much. And Cubbies, and thanks for singing today. You did a wonderful job. Oh, it was my pleasure. Joe Montaigne with us here at Wrigley Field. We are through seven innings. It's still one to nothing, Cubs. One to nothing our score as we head to the eighth inning the Cubs make a defensive substitution Jose Hernandez takes over in left field for the Cubs but the story of this afternoon is the man on that mound Kerry Wood. We certainly do and with 15 strikeouts you can understand why they're excited about this young man. He has struck out 15 Astros today Clark Gutierrez and Osmus the next three to face him and as we have a moment let's take a look Steve at today's Ameritech play that makes a difference the only hit of the game Ricky Gutierrez gets a breaking ball that hangs on the inner portion he waits takes it to the left side and this is a base hit as you can see Kevin Ory just barely gets a tip of the glove on it and although there'll be some controversy folks that's a hit it was a good scoring call and that's the only hit of the day. So Kerry Wood with 15 strikeouts in case you wondered the all time Cub record for strikeouts in a game is 17 way back May 30th 1906 against St. Louis Jack Feister the man that did it it was a 15 inning game Arnie Harris told us that Feister had very good control that day and was able to snap that breaking ball over the outside corner at will how are the ratings for that game. Well no television but a lot of good radio calls simulated two balls no strikes I'm a little worried right now with the mound conditions the way they are and Kerry Wood starting to get a few pitches up as he did last inning you kind of worry about his control it is a one to nothing game Wood has not walked a, a batter in the ball game. he's given up one single and he's hit Craig Biggio and Clark taking his time wants that mound to get just as soggy as it can be. A lot of gamesmanship right now. Bob Scanlon up in the bullpen. He's throwing. Threw it right by him. Two and one. There's a look at the former Cub, Bob Scanlon. They don't have many right handers down there. They do have four left handers, however. Doug Henry and Bob Scanlon. The two right handers. Two balls, one strike. It's three and one. Gutierrez, the lone man to single off Wood, is on deck. The three one to Clark. Three and two. Well, again, you don't have much time to decide, but that was ball four. It was low and out of the zone. And now if you throw that high fastball you're probably going to throw it right by Dave Clark. The crowd will tell you the story. It was a high pitch and he just did get a piece. Wood threw 104 pitches in seven innings against the Cardinals last time out. He's thrown 102 and he's in the eighth here today and he struck out 15 men. He hasn't walked a single batter and it's not like there's a whole lot off that fastball. Got him. Boy he pulled the string on Dave Clark who was way out in front of it and that doesn't seem fair. That is number 16 a rookie record for the Cubs Dick Drott and Bert Hooten had 15 and this season he is atop the leaderboard in K's 16 strikeouts and look at this pitch he pulls the string and Dave Clark has no chance he struck out four in a row again he struck out five in a row twice in this game. He has 16 punch outs and another strike to Gutierrez. This is amazing. A 
A little squibber foul. He's got him set up two strikes again. Bill Regan telling Tom Gambo, you see, I worked with this young man. We tightened <laughs> yeah. up the curveball, got him thrown a little bit harder, and look, this is the result. The 0 2. Got him. He's tied the record. Well, Larry Durker is on the phone to the Cub bullpen telling him to get up back. Yeah, that's right. And he just fires a fastball right on the corner right by Ricky Gutierrez. 17 strikeouts. And now Brad Osmus the hitter. Wood has tied the team record for strikeouts in a game. It's a 92 year old record. Well, I am hoping that the rain does not stop this one short of the ninth inning. As this young man could set the all time record. He's one strike away. How about swinging at a curveball that lands two feet in front of home plate? <laughs> you think wow. they're seeing the ball real well? He's threatening to strike out the side for the fourth time in the game. It's a new Cub record and the first of many I'm sure that will fall for this young right hander. We go to the bottom half. It's still one to nothing. Well a record setting performance so far for Kerry Wood. He has struck out a franchise record 18 men today. And he's within striking distance of the all time major league record in strikeouts. Well this being his fifth start you can understand where he saved his best for number five. <laughs> yeah. Man oh man unbelievable. Has been Kerry Wood but first things first today the Cubs want to welcome the partners in education tutoring program of the fourth Presbyterian Church to Wrigley Field courtesy of Halo Industries and folks you have seen one of the best pitching performances in baseball history today and certainly in franchise history as well. The rain is still falling. Here at the ballpark. Mickey Morandini will lead things off here in the eighth. It's still a one nothing game. Not only has Wood struck out 18 he's given up only one hit. And Morandini 0 for 3 on the day takes. A ball 1 and 0. In the ninth it'll be a pinch hitter for Reynolds and back to the top with Biggio and Bell. One and one. What a day for Kerry Wood. He's had everything in the strike zone and everything breaking sharply. And these Houston hitters haven't had a sniff. Morandini line drive into right field for a base hit. That's the seventh Cub hit. And a little insurance would be nice. Only one hit for the Astros. And I wonder what what that Astro manager Larry Durker is thinking about Kerry Wood. We were talking to him yesterday. He got his summons to the big leagues when he was 18. He said he didn't have much control difficulty. Well he's seeing a 20 year old not have, have any of that today either. Here's Sosa. He's got a hit today. That extends his hitting streak to 13 games. Well, in Larry's first full season, he was seven and eight. He had 109 strikeouts and 147 and two thirds innings, and he started 19 games. This young man will fly by those numbers. An unearned run, the difference in this game. So so a little pop into right Bell will battle the water and he'll make the grab and there's out number one in the eighth. You can't take anything away from Shane Reynolds he's been brilliant today. Limiting the Cubs just one unearned run but sometimes you pick the wrong day to pitch. And that's been the case so far against young Kerry Wood. 
So Roger Clemens holds the all time major league record. He struck out 20. I think he did it once to the Mariners and once to the Tigers. The National League record is 19. So Kerry Wood, if he could retire, all three Astros on strikes would set the major league record today at Wrigley Field. Was it Carlton and Seaver both had 19? I know Carlton did. I think I think you're right. And Carlton might have lost that game in which he fanned 19. Roger Clemens did it in 86 and 96. That ball hammered into the Astro bullpen and foul. 0 and 1 to Mark Grace as Mickey Morandini breaking on the play. I like to see the hit and run in this scenario, trying to keep the inning alive. Jose Hernandez in the on deck circle. He came on to take over left field defensively for Henry Rodriguez. The rain starting to lighten up here. One on, one out. Cubs leading one to nothing here in the bottom half of the eighth. Kerry Wood, the story. The pitch evens the count. Well, I wonder what the folks around Major League Baseball watching the game on WGN today are thinking about Kerry Wood's performance. I think there's a lot of people going to be asking the Astros, what did Kerry Wood look like? Well, we didn't see much That's of him, so we can't right. tell you. But he sounded pretty good. Two and one to Grace. I guess Kerry's next outing will be against the Diamondbacks. That'll be in Arizona. I'm sure they're looking forward to that. And then he'll get the Reds on Saturday, the 16th in Cincinnati. Two balls and a strike. Ripped into right. Will it drop? It will. Mickey very gingerly scampers around second, and he stands at third. First and third, one out. Grace another two hit game. Cubs fans make sure you pick up the latest issue of Cubs quarterly the new issue features a birthday tribute to Billy Williams articles on Mark Grace Kevin Ory Kerry Wood and full color photos of the 98 Cubs Cubs quarterly available here at the ballpark Wrigley Field as of mid May but reserve your copy of this collectible by calling 800 248 wins remember except no imitations ask for Cubs quarterly by name. Kerry Wood sitting there contemplating what his ninth inning is going to look like and it will be a lot more comfortable for him if the Cubs can push one across. And that's in the hands of Jose Hernandez. Well folks I've had the good pleasure of watching Randy Johnson pitch for the Seattle Mariners for a couple of years and I've seen him flirt with perfect games with no hitters with 14 15 16 strikeout games and this young man at the age of 20 doesn't give much away to the big unit. He has been absolutely magnificent today. Jose Hernandez who took over defensively an inning or so ago is the Cub batter. He's behind nothing and one. Jose hit a home run last night to put the Cubs on top briefly four to three. Doesn't need a home run here. This has to stay out of the double play. One ball one strike and again lost in this day has been the pitching of Shane Reynolds he has been absolutely fantastic too he has struck out ten Cubs he's scattered eight Chicago hits an unearned run on the Dave Clark error in left field moved a runner up 90 feet and the Cubs got a sack fly RBI out of it that's been all the scoring today one ball two strikes. A one to nothing nail biter at Wrigley Field. One and two. Hit toward third. They'll try to turn two. Hal took forever. Jose beats the rap. Boy, it took him a long time to make that throw, didn't it? Well, the Cubs get a run, and Jack Howell looked like all he needed was a force out at second. You got to realize that sometimes you have to hurry up this play and watch how from the left field camera. 
It takes a long time getting it over there and no chance to get Hernandez who drives in a run and a big one as Jose drives in his 10th and gives the Cubs some breathing room. So he stands at first with two outs. Jeff Blauser a two hit day today. Cubs leading two to nothing in the bottom of the eighth. One ball no strikes. Jeff a double offensively in the fourth inning the highlight of his at bats on the afternoon. The Cubs trying to get a game back from the first place Astros trying to go to four and two on the homestand. And we'll await the Giants for the first to four tomorrow night. Houston will have another off day and then they head to Milwaukee for three. The Brewers won in the bottom of the ninth today three to two over the Padres. One and oh. One and one. Didn't mean to swing. It's a foul ball in front of the plate. One ball, two strikes to the Cubs shortstop, Jeff Blauser. And Brad Osmus makes a friend by tossing the foul ball into the first row of seats. Kerry Wood awaiting the top of the ninth. He's got a two run cushion. And for a young man on the mound with everything going for him you can't wait to get out there. Oh. He wants this inning to end. He feels with two runs he's got enough. One and two runner goes the Osmus throw to second is a laser beam and Jose is retired and that retires the Cubs in the eighth but a big big insurance run on two hits nobody left we go to the ninth and Kerry Wood seeks the record after this timeout. We go to the ninth inning. The man of the afternoon Kerry Wood has already set the Cubs all time record for single game strikeouts with 18. The National League record 19 the Major League record 20. And it's the most strikeouts since David Cohn punched out 19 in 91. Rod and just in case Rod Beck getting ready and Bill Gullickson as a rookie fan 18 Chicago Cubs back in 1980 while a member of the Montreal Expos. So one more strikeout and Kerry Wood will have that. He faces Bill Spires first pitch fouled away and again look how late he was it's 0 and 1 Spires hitting 242 0 for 6 is a pinch hitter. And he started the ball game last night. Had a key double in the seventh inning. Spires ready to deal one. Line foul out of play 0 and 2. Jack Brickhouse just called Ernie Harris said it's the best game that he's seen since Bob Henley pitched a one hitter for the Cubs against the Dodgers but Sandy Koufax pitched a no hitter for the Dodgers against the Cubs. One ball two strikes. I don't know about you but I got goosebumps watching this thing. Well, I think if he throws him a hook especially the kind that he threw to Dave Clark. And that'll be number 19 and Sandy Martinez has done a great job behind the plate says give me the hook kid let's see it. He tomahawked that one toward the Astro dugout. One and two the count. And a lot has to be said for Sandy Martinez because it's not like Kerry Wood has shaken him off a great deal. Kerry Wood has shaken him off a few times, not many. And Sandy's done a great job pumping his fist, saying, let's go get him. Come on, kid. One more strike to go. The pitch. Hot foul. Look out, Mr. Santo. There goes another window. <laughs> My car is next to run, so <laughs> follow it over the other side. One ball, two strikes to Spires. Fans on their feet oh. all over the ballpark. They're seeing something special here today. Got it! He ties the National League record.
Oh, Mr. Brickhouse, what do you think of this young man? Well, Give us a call. That was a floating slider that came well inside to Spires, and he just swung over the top. Watch it again as Billy Spires comes up empty, and he's number 19. And to the top of the order we go, and Craig Biggio. Wood has struck out seven straight men. He goes for number 20 right here. One ball, no strikes. Give the umpire Jerry Meals credit, too. He has had a very consistent strike zone for both pitchers today. 19 and counting for Wood. To the shortstop. Two down. He's got a chance to tie Clemens, though, if he can retire Bell. And the fans boo Craig Biggio for making contact. <laughs> One lone hit. That coming to lead off the third inning by Ricky Gutierrez. And there is the major league record. Roger Clemens, the record to 20 strikeouts. He got Bell in the first. And the adrenaline still pumping very, very hard for Wood. He is throwing still in the upper 90s. I guess he needs some more seasoning. Obviously, they called him up well too early, especially yeah. for the Astros. 1 0 to Bell. Oh. Nasty 1 and 1. Well, a collage of these strikeouts would take up most of Sports Center. Get ready to see it again. One and two. Well, one more curveball, and that should be about it because Derek Bell isn't even coming close. Come on, number 20. The National League record. He tied the Major League record. A one hit shutout. Two to nothing with 20 strikeouts and no walks. And how about that? Those of you lucky enough to have witnessed this on WGN have seen something you might not see again anytime soon. 20 strikeouts by the rookie, Kerry Wood. He ties Roger Clemens. For the all time major league record, and he makes it in his fifth major league start. Unbelievable. And we're going to hear from Kerry Wood, so don't go away. There'll be a lot of people that want to talk to him. We're going to get a chance to speak to him, and I'll tell you something that performance was just absolutely overwhelming. Kerry, congratulations. What a ball game today. Thank you very much. Uh, obviously, you felt great. <laughs> Tell us about the adrenaline in that ninth inning. Um, it's still going on. I really can't. I, I just, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm out of words. I don't have anything to say. Kerry, just... in the bullpen before the game, when you were warming up, did you feel anything special? Did you have any idea that you would be able to have a day today where everything you had was over the plate and working perfectly? No, I, to tell you the truth, I. I didn't have a very good uh, warm up today and uh, you know I was just trying to go out and get out and uh, it was just one of those days. Well it was one of those days that's in the record books and I'm sure your folks were watching. This was an unbelievable performance and did it help the fact that every pitch was like the World Series because you only had a one run lead and that came early in the ball game. I tell you what uh, I'm going to give most of credit to the fans they were in it they were in it the whole game and uh, every time I got two strikes they were on their feet and uh, 
you know, you, you can't ask for anything more than that. My adrenaline was uh, was racing. How about the job behind the plate by Sandy today? You guys seem to be locked in together from the first pitch. Tell you what, Sandy did a great job today. Uh, I think I only shook twice, and uh, I think he put the same sign back down. So I threw everything he wanted, and uh, we were pretty much on the same page all day. Well, Kerry, you found a way to shut down the Astros' running game. You just didn't let him get on base. <laughs> Uh, you know, Sa Sandy's got a great arm back there. He's going he's gonna to stop guys from running when they do get on base. Were you counting along with the fans? Did you know how many men you had struck out and that you were chasing the major league record that you tied today? No, I, I, I couldn't even tell you how many I had. Well, you had 20. Did they give you the baseball at least? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> make, not sure yet. You, make sure you get that, young man, because that's one for the mantelpiece. All right. And I'm sure they're going to find you in the kangaroo court for doing so well and only your fifth start. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sure you'll I'm, take I'm it. getting fined somehow, I'm sure. <laughs> well, great job, kid. Congratulations. Thank and you. Hopefully many, many more performances like that. Thank you. Kerry Wood struck out 20, a one-hitter. An amazing performance, Steve Stone, something we may never see again. Well, there's the last pitch, and Kerry Wood threw another slider to Derek Bell. He got him for the second time, and you look up and down this lineup card, and all you saw was strikeouts. Four different times he struck out the side, and look at the mob scene in front of that Cub dugout as this young man has tied the Major League record. He was dominant from the first inning when he fanned all three men, and he never looked back. An amazing, amazing performance today for Kerry Wood, and even more importantly for the team, he gives the club just what they needed, a complete game, a win over the Astros, so nothing but positives today at Wrigley Field. Kerry Wood strikes out 20, a one-hit shutout, and we'll be back to talk more about this thrilling day at the ballpark right after this. Well, this is one of those days where 15,758 were on hand, but 10 years from now, there'll be about 30,000 or maybe more that say they were at the ballpark to watch Kerry Wood tie the Major League record, our Budweiser play of the game. A nasty hook strikes out Derek Bell. Wood, the one hit shutout. The Cubs win it by a final of two to nothing. An amazing day at the ballpark. Steve Stone and I will have a final word when we come back to Wrigley Field right after this. The Cubs win their fourth game on this long 10 game homestand two to nothing your final score the story of course Kerry Wood the one hit shutout he strikes out a major league tying 20 Astros today he did it on only 117 pitches and let's not forget about Shane Reynolds he struck out 10 men gave up only two runs on eight hits but he picked as Steve Stone said the wrong day to pitch as Kerry Wood simply overpowering as the Cubs get a game back against the front running Astros. And we await now the San Francisco Giants who come to town tomorrow night. This game as well will be on WGN. Jeremy Gonzalez will take the hill against Mark Gardner. Join us at 7 o'clock from the friendly confines for game one of a four-game weekend series against the San Francisco Giants. Kerry Wood, oh my goodness, he was outstanding today. He shuts out the Astros with 20 strikeouts. But more to come, Steve Stone and I will talk more about his performance on the 10th inning show, which comes your way right after this timeout. <laughs> 